I was going to make a review on Rebel Moon, but then I saw Cartoon Cheese video responding to a YouTuber named Asgare. I haven't seen too many videos from Asgare, nor have I seen the new Fairly Odd Parent show, but as someone who did watch the original show as a kid, I think I'll give my response. The video is called Modern Reboots Are Unfaithful Trash, explaining why Fairly Odd Parents A New Wish is bad, completely ignoring the fact that this is a sequel to the original, not a reboot. Ignoring that, let's get into the full video. <sighs> this isn't gonna bode well for me, is it? Mindless drivel plot lines, flashy art style, and an overt unfaithfulness to the source material. Last I checked, Fairly Odd Parents was never faithful to its own source material. The series chose to disregard 90% of the show's lore and characters as time went on, and various characters had their undesirable traits exaggerated to an extreme and all of their best traits forgotten about. Look at Cosmo, for example. In the original seasons, he was actually really smart, at least as smart as any normal person could be. And whenever he made mistakes, it was either due to his dysfunctional wand or miscommunication. But in later seasons, he became a total dunce that would put people in danger. Not only that, but they chose to introduce Chloe to the series and have her share Timmy's fairies, despite Chloe being perfect with no problems in her life. So the idea of the show being unfaithful to its source material is a bad argument. Also, flashy animation, get out of here. The usage of 2D and 3D animation will never not be good to me, unless we're talking about Wish. It's perfect, and it's great here. Plus, the animation style of the last seasons of Fairly Odd Parents were so controversial. Also, mindless plot lines? Are you serious? The original Fairly Odd Parents ended on some random episode about dolls or something. Like, uh, Timmy's dad was involved, they forgot all about the rules, and when the conflict was resolved, that was it. That was Fairly Odd Parents. So, what's your point, really? These phenomena are not unique to the Fairly Odd Parents. These symptoms carry on to many remakes and reboots that have sprouted from Hollywood in the last few years. This is not a reboot. Whether it's animated or live action, movie or TV show. And if this were just a one-off thing in media, I probably wouldn't be making this video. But this is a repeated cancer that is spreading to more and more properties, and is only destructive in nature. And so I gotta take the mantle and expose just what makes these properties so inherently bad. I like how he presents himself like he's trying to expose the whole trend of bad reboots when he's just saying stuff that's already been said without providing anything new to prove a point that has no validity. Let's go. Wow, the title hasn't even shown up yet and I've already had so much to say. He then goes on to explain how so many reboots are trash and everyone hates them, but ignores reboots that are liked, such as the 2012 TMNT show, which I consider to be the ideal adaptation of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. No, no, no. They actively disrespect the source material while they do it. They have to warp the brand to their liking, whether it's monetary, social, or storytelling purposes, if you really want to give them that credit. Okay, now we're getting to the main topic of the video. <sighs> There are a thousand reasons for not liking Disney live-action adaptations. For one, they treat animation like a downgrade, and two, they feel unoriginal. But race swapping? Like racism, racism! Also, why is Rey one of your examples for reboot characters? Out of all the examples you used, she's the only one that's original. Okay, she's not exactly a original character, there's more on that later, but... She is a completely new character for the sequel series, not some sort of recast. Especially in the animated realm, aim to purposely disrespect the original vision. Starting off with the fact that the original creators don't want this kind of stuff, almost ever. We've all heard of how Steven Hillenburg never really wanted a reboot of Spongebob, but ever since his late passing, Nick has capitalized on two already, with both thankfully pulling in little to narrate. Oh, uh, he's using Steven Hillenburg to push his Spongebob spin-offs are bad agenda. Okay. One, Steven Hilberg never said that. He never said he was against reboots. He never said he didn't want reboots. He just said that he didn't think reboots could happen in the distant future because Spongebob wasn't as popular yet. Two, there's a thousand other reasons for why you can hate Spongebob spinoffs. Do you know why I don't like the Spongebob spinoffs? Here it is. The only reason a spinoff's existence is justified is to answer certain questions that the original media left behind and give more context to scenes in the original media or just expand the lore. That's why stories such as Better Call Saul or Red Dead Redemption 2 are so loved and feel so important to many fans of the original medias. But we're not talking about Star Wars or Breaking Bad or Red Dead Redemption 
we're talking about SpongeBob SquarePants. A show, like many kids shows of its kind, have negative continuity, where each and every single episode takes place in its own self-contained universe. There is no lore or character backstory to explore because it would just be retconned in the very next episode or just changed up in the next movie. For example, in earlier seasons, it's been established that SpongeBob and Sandy met when they were adults, but the recent movie states that they met in summer camp when they were little kids. That's how it works in Teen Titans Go, with only a couple things crossing over, meanwhile everything else takes place in another universe. Okay, he makes a lot of claims, and I think Alpha J Show and Cartoon She do a great job at debunking all of those claims, so I'm just going to skip over to the reason you guys all came. Just makes you ask... Why? Not to mention how they unnecessarily have to, all of a sudden, change everything about the show. I mean, no one wants to talk about it, but the current bandwagon is the whole race swapping thing they all have to do with animated characters. April O'Neil, Timmy Turner, Velma, etc. Okay, the moment you've all been waiting for. Hazel is now a recast of Timmy Turner. She is an original character created by the show producers for a sequel taking place after Timmy grew up. She is not a recast or a reboot. The idea that Hazel is just replacing Timmy is the dumbest thing ever. Remember when Hank Azaria was shamelessly ousted from playing Apu in The Simpsons because he wasn't the race of the character? Because I do. It's almost like actors are supposed to portray things to their- Oh. Now he's using Apu for some reason. Look, as an Indian American, I guess I should give my thoughts on Apu. I like the character, I think it was kind of wrong to get rid of him, but also people make too much of a fuss of it. Both people who found him offensive, and people who defend the character. Like, I remember seeing a documentary of an Indian comedian talking about Apu, and I found people saying things like, go back to India and other BS. And in real life, I've constantly had people quoted the thank you, come again line at my face several times, even not out of humor or irony, just racism. I feel like people defending Apu aren't actually defending how great of a character he was, but more so just defending him as an excuse to be racist. Back on topic, what do these voice actors have to do with Hazel? It feels like you're just using her as an excuse to push your agenda. Because Hazel is not like any of the two people you've mentioned. Her voice actor is black. I've looked it up. He's racial, that's the only thing I can see when watching. I never saw Blade as a black character. Or Cyborg or Gerald or Static Shock. You don't see Blade as a black character? Blade? Blade's first comic book designs were him as a black stereotype before his badass getup was made for his ideal suit. In Cyborg and Static, both characters whose central storylines involve the life of an African-American teenager, Static Shock literally had an entire episode where his best friend's dad was a racist bigot, and you don't see him as black? <sighs> and now you're using a I'm not racist because my favorite character is black with Uncle Ruckus as your example. Uncle Ruckus. Why do I feel like you don't actually know these characters and just look up best black character and pick the first ones you found. The black female Timmy Turner is clearly just a cheap attempt to reboot this property without any other significant pitches for change. Again, she's not Timmy Turner, she's nothing like Timmy Turner, and she's not meant to be Timmy Turner. This isn't even like her copying Timmy's personality or doing the same storylines. Rey from Star Wars is an example of copying another character's storyline. Her three movies are really just Luke's story, the only difference is that she struggles less and has less training. It's basically the original trilogy, but everything goes right instead of there being obstacles left and right. Terminator Dark Fate is also another example of copying another character's storyline. The entire movie is a shameless shot for shot of Terminator 2 with only a couple differences. Filmento does a better job explaining it, so I'll just like leave some sort of link or maybe a card somewhere by now. But Hazel is not like that. She's completely opposite to Timmy's personality because she's not meant to replace Timmy or be like Timmy. She's her own person. And this video isn't just about the new race swapping phenomenon, but it's an extremely prevalent symptom of a larger issue, which ties into the lack of respect for staying faithful to the original property. How can you compare Velma to this? Velma was so bad that it united both the racist alt-right and the liberal SJWs to agree that this show was the worst thing ever. A new wish is a little double darling of the community now. He then states that the creative vision of the original show's creator is being destroyed when the original creator of Fairly Odd Parents literally announced the new show and was in on the entire thing. 
meaning that he either approved of Hazel or even came up with her himself. Create their own original stories, so they need to ruin existing stuff to be able to call themselves inclusive and hip with the times. This absolutely also hinders the story and episode quality, as the main selling point here is the obvious element that's right in front of us, but no one's allowed to acknowledge it for some reason. From the creators of Nostalgia Good Reboot Bad, I bring you all black characters are bad because they're black. Characters good, race shouldn't matter. Look, I'd agree with you, but in the same breath you said Hazel was a bad character because she was black. Anyway, can't wait to see a Sadik Shocker Spawn movie. While they're at it, it wouldn't hurt to race swap one more movie, would it? <laughs> no, this is giving me flashbacks to when MCU haters demanded all non-white heroes be recast as white people because Miles Morales was a thing. Why is giving black people representation via original characters diminishing the representations of white people? I've seen this way too many times across so many medias. Why is it that Finn, a black stormtrooper who's also a side character in a spin-off, suddenly taking away representation from white characters like Anakin? You know Anakin? the protagonist of the entire franchise? Why does Rings of Power having a black elf and a black dwarf take away from Anglo-Saxon representation when Lord of the Rings has inspiration from various North European cultures and is meant to be its own Norse mythology? Wait, no, no, sorry, its own mythology. How does T'Challa or Miles take away white representation when T'Challa is his own character and Miles is meant to serve as Peter's best friend slash surrogate son? We're living in a reality where giving our favorite characters a family is now woke. Hey, in God of War, Atreus is Kratos' son, who is also Loki. Loki in Norse mythology is technically gender fluid since he can turn into males and females. Does that mean that God of War is now woke? It's dumb. At the end of the day, I don't think Asgir is being intentionally racist, but his arguments are poorly presented and over-reliant on nostalgia. We've all fallen into that trap before. But it's important to recognize when our criticisms are valid and when they're being blinded by our love for the past. So ask here, if you're watching this, consider this friendly advice. If you're going to critique a show, do it for the right reasons, not just because you're nostalgic for the original. And with that, I'm going to go to bed. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Please, I need it.